Our next section is section 2.6. Um, it is factoring quadratics where the leading coefficient is uh, not equal to one. So unlike the last lesson where we just had a blank x squared, this lesson we are going to have um, numbers in front of the x squared when we start. So um, first thing we want to look at is can we factor out any greatest common factor first? And once you do that, if so, um, does it turn it into one of the previous types of problems? So let me give you an example of that. So I'm going to have 6x squared minus 12x minus 18. I, there is a common factor in here. So I'm going to factor out a 6. So it means 6 is going to go in front. I'm going to divide each term here by 6. 6x squared divided by 6 is x squared. Negative 12 divided by 6 is negative 2. Negative 18 divided by 6 is negative 3. Um, factor using 2.5 method, if possible. So I want two numbers that add to a negative 2 that multiply to negative 3. And those would be a negative 3, a positive 1. So I'm going to write 6, x minus 3, plus 1. And then that would be the final answer. If I were to multiply these two binomials together, I would get what's inside that set of parentheses. Then if I multiply each term in there by the 6, I would end up with my original equation. I'm going to do one more example like that. That would be 5x squared minus 15x. Minus 50. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a 5. So I'm just going to leave me with x squared. Minus 3x. Minus 10. I want two numbers that add to negative 3. That multiply to negative 10. Those two numbers are going to be um, negative 5 and 2. So my final answer is x minus 5 and x plus 2. Verify that. Uh, 2 minus 5 is negative 3. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. And that is the answer. Again, the first thing you look at is, hey, can I pull out a greatest common factor? Okay. If I cannot pull out a greatest common factor, we're going to have to um, just write down the example. 6x squared minus 7x minus 20. Um, let's just look at two binomials. I'm going to call it AX plus B times CX plus D. If I were to multiply these together, I would do my first terms, which would be AC times X squared. I'd multiply my outer terms. That would be AD 
times x. I would multiply my inner terms. That would be bc times x. And then I would multiply my last terms, which would be b d. Notice this last term here. That last term, that BD, okay, that's just like the same thing we had before. They need to multiply to get me the last number. Um, but what's different is what's in the middle. I've got a combination of four different things. So I'm going to teach you a method to do this that's going to turn it into the old method. And it has a um, sentence that goes with it called Swedish fish don't really swim. Okay. Um, this first six is coming from either a one times a six or a two times a three. This 20 is coming from a one times a 20, a two times a 10, or a four times a five. Then we got to mismatch these things to try to get that seven in the middle, um, which could take a long time. But if we use this method that I'm going to show you, um, it will turn it into one of your previous problems. So this one right here, we are going to slide the leading coefficient. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to bring it over here, and I'm going to multiply those two things together. So it gives me 6x, I mean it's going to give me x squared minus 7x minus 120. My next step, the F, stands for factor. We are going to factor this just like one of our previous problems. I need two numbers that add to negative 7 that multiply to negative 120. Um, so we can go through these really quick. Um, if you can't do it right off the top of your head, um, you can you can start listing all the factors. So one in one twenty, two in sixty, three and forty, um, four and thirty, five and twenty five. No, five and twenty-four, six and twenty. Seven doesn't go in there. Um, One twenty divided by eight is fifteen. Then we have ten and twelve. The one that's going to give me the negative seven is this combination right here: the eight and the fifteen. So, um, and it's going to be a negative 7, so it's going to be negative 15 and a positive 8. So for my factor step, um, I am going to write x minus 15, x plus 8. The D stands for divide. I'm going to divide by whatever my swing number is. Okay. That's going to take into account that, hey, I really didn't have a 120. I had parts of that 120. My R is going to be reduce. So 
So three goes into both negative 15 and six. Three goes into negative 15, five. Three goes into six twice. Um, two goes into both of those terms. I would end up with a four and I would end up with a three. And our last step is we are going to swing any of these numbers that are left on the bottom out in front over here. So my final answer would be 2x minus 5, 3x plus 4. And that would be the final answer. I'm going to be doing several more examples because I know this is a very, very difficult concept to get, but it is a very important concept to get. Next example. 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. S. I'm going to bring the 2 over here. So I'm going to come up with x squared minus 5x minus 6. F. So we're going to slide. We're going to factor. Two numbers that multiply to negative 6 that add to negative 5 are negative 6 and positive 1. I am going to divide by the 2. I'm going to reduce. And then I'm going to swing. And we're done. Okay, I'm going to do that exact same problem without, but that's doing every step that's like this. I'm going to show you how I would do this one. 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. But one thing I want you to notice is that a lot of times these two numbers that I get, I can do in my head. Or I could write this out and do it. And notice I'm always getting those two numbers that I got from my factors divided by the number that was in front. Okay, this reduce step and then the swing step, I could do both of those at the same time. I could reduce and swing anything that doesn't reduce. So I'm going to do this one again. 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. So the first thing I'm going to do when I go to set up to do this problem, I'm going to make my crisscross without writing anything down yet. I'm going to write two things that add to negative 5 that multiply to negative 6. And that again was the negative 6 and the positive 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all the way through the divide step right now. I'm going to write x minus 6 over 2, x plus 1 over 2. And then I'm going to, so this is, all of this is the Swedish fish in D. And then my next step I'm going to do is the really swim. So I'm going to reduce and I'm going to swing. So this one straight out reduces to x minus 3. And then this one I'm going to swing out and give me 2x plus 1. So this is the minimum amount of work I would need to see. And this would be the maximum amount of work I would need to see. Okay? One thing I want to warn you about is if there's a negative sign in front of the x squared, You've got to get rid of that negative sign first. Um, the method doesn't really work very well if there's a negative in front of the leading coefficient. So let me give you an example like that. Negative 2x squared 
plus 7x minus 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out the negative out of every term here first. That's that factor out the greatest common factor. Now I can do the work that's in the middle. I need two numbers that multiply to 12. That's the a times c. That add to negative 7. And that's your b term. Um, and that would be negative 3 and negative 4. Okay. What I'm going to do is I don't want to forget that negative sign. I'm going to write x minus 3 over 2, x minus 4 over 2. Then I'm going to do my reduce and swings at the same time. So I have a minus. That 2 is going to come out in front. 2x minus 3. 4 divided by 2 is 2, so that would be x minus 2. Um, and I'm going to do one more example for you. And that is going to be 3x squared. Plus 22x. Minus 16. I need two numbers that multiply to negative 48 that add 22. And that would be 24 and negative 2. So I'm going to write x plus 24 over 3 times x minus 2 over 3. This reduces to 8. I have x plus 8, and then that 3 is going to swing out in front to give me 3x minus 2. Okay. I know that doing this method is very, very rough. Um, I'm going to redo that example 4, showing you the way that IXL is probably going to show you about it. So it's 3x squared plus 22x minus 16. I'm going to do this thing I did first, right? Same way. Two numbers that multiply to negative 48 that add 22 are 24 and negative 2. The book is going to show you what the IXL in your book is going to show you. It's going to say, hey, copy that 3x squared. Copy that negative 16. That 22x, we're going to split it up into two parts. I'm going to split it up to, as a plus 24x and a minus 2x. Those numbers gave me the split. Then I can put parentheses around the first two. Parentheses around the last two with a plus sign in between the two. And then I could pull something out of each of these groups. There's a common 3x in both of those. There's a common negative 2 in both of those. One of my factors is going to be 3x minus 2. The other factor I'm going to get by doing division. 3x squared divided by 3x is x. 24x divided by 3x is 8. You notice I get the exact same answer that I got doing it the other way. So hopefully that's enough to help you guys get going and um, do it. Again, if you're having difficulties with it, um, please try to persevere. Please don't just give up at... Um, after you can't get a couple of them right.